Hey guys, RW down here in the shop. Uh, I'm sorry, but I broke the camera juggalo gave me. So that's it for the HD for a while, guys. <coughs> Dropped it and it wouldn't turn back on. Uh, this is the mini bike that I got. I got it from VM Innovations. It's a refurb. Got it for $269.95 shipped. Got here in about three days. I was very impressed by the price and by the shipping. And that's where being impressed stopped for me. Because uh, this bike, it's a refurb, which means somebody bought it and for whatever reason returned it. Okay, consider how much it would cost to ship something this big and heavy. You would really be motivated to return it, wouldn't you? Must be something you didn't like about it to return it. Hmm. So, <coughs> lesson learned there. Do not buy refurbs. So, Here's the first thing that was wrong. You, the bike comes completely assembled except for the handlebars, and you, you're given these two-part clamps, and you can see that one's fractured. Well, so as I was tightening down the clamp, I noticed that it was fractured. Now, I don't know if it was fractured before I started clamping it, and then I just broke it all the way, or if it broke, or whatever. But whatever it is, that's completely, obviously, unacceptable, and it makes me really worry about the strength of these clamps in general considering that's the only thing to keep you from crashing and burning, right? It's your handlebars. <coughs> so that's not too cool. So, second thing that wasn't cool was they never drained the crankcase when they shipped it, which is a complete no-no for all kinds of reasons. Very bad for the engine, very bad for the guy shipping it, the truck, right? Very bad for the product, gets oil all over it. This thing was slathered in oil. Here's the box. The box had been beat to hell. You can see the oil inside the box. There's some oil on this side. There's a lot of oil on this side. You can see where it's just been slamming around in the box and dropped and bashed and everything. But it survived somehow. So, tried to start it. Got it to start. Well, first, but, you know, you have to put oil in it. It comes with a little box. This also is slathered with oil. Mmm, lovely, huh? Add oil here before starting the first time. Failure to add oil, blah, blah, blah. So I pulled out the dipstick. I looked at the dipstick, and there was just a dab of oil on the very, very bottom of the dipstick. I was like, okay. So, filled the thing up with oil, with the oil provided. This is break-in oil. I'm supposed to change it after two hours. And apparently it overfilled the shit out of it. Like 10 million times too much oil. Okay. All right, so that made a big mess. That was fun. <coughs> then, try to start it. It would only start and run if it was on the choke position. Okay, wonderful. So, took the air filter out. It's totally saturated with oil. Cleaned it, dried it, put it back in. Yay. Okay, now it starts and runs. Idles, does everything. All right, even though it's only got one handlebar clamp, let's just see if it runs around. So I try ride it around. It will not go up the slightest incline. We're talking about a 5% grade. I live, I have to go up and down a 30% grade, okay, just to get to my house. This thing, if it got to the bottom of the mountain, it would never come back up. That would be it. And, and not just that, but I mean, it will not go up the slightest incline. So I've talked with VM Innovations, and they, of course, turned me straight to Motovox, because once you buy one of these things, you don't get any help from whoever you bought it from. If you buy it from Sears or Kmart or whatever, forget about it. You don't bring it back. You, they tell you to call M Motovox. So Motovox is sending me a new handlebar clamp at no charge. should be here in five days. I'm glad I got this well before my son's birthday. But the clutch is slipping. And the only thing they told me was is that maybe the governor was screwed in too far, making the engine run too slow. But it's not, to my mind. If you look at it, I mean, you've got a fair amount of play there on the... That's the governor. You see the thing with the spring and the screw that limits the throttle body action. If you've ever used any kind of... Wow, I think I broke two cameras today. I just dropped this one, and now the lens is crooked. And it's one of those complex lenses that has to wind in and out. So it's it's probably done. This will probably be the last video I'll be shooting for a while, guys, until I can get a camera, I guess. I don't know. I don't think this one's going to 
want to close, and then if it doesn't want to close, it's probably going to grind. Yeah, so it's been a real fail of a day for me, to be honest with you. you know, buy a birthday present, try to save some money. Big mistake, should have bought a brand new one. But anyway, to get on with it, <coughs> so you got a clutch that's slipping, alright? So I took the clutch all the way apart, looked at it, and cleaned it, and I even put it in the blast cabinet and blasted the surfaces that make contact with each other so it would have plenty of grit. It's just a little clutch underneath this thing here, this plastic cover. And, uh, man, still doesn't do nothing. So I'm going to try and see if taking the governor out and giving it maximum throttle helps it at all. But other than that, the only thing left to do is to buy an aftermarket clutch. I found one for $57. Consider this only cost me 270 bucks. So we're talking like one-fifth of the cost of this whole thing will be buying an upgraded clutch. Hoping that that will change the situation. But I'm not sure it will. It's only a two and a half hour horsepower engine. It probably only spins at, you know, three or four thousand RPMs tops. So, I don't know, man. Yeah, not really sure if this is going to be a great thing or not. Now, if this thing will go up and down hills, that's all I want it to do. The brakes work okay. The tires have plenty of grip. Very low center of gravity. You fall off it, you're not going to get hurt too bad. It's not going to go too fast. It just has to climb. So this has an 11 tooth sprocket on the front. You can put a 10 tooth which uh, will make you go uh, a little bit slower but gives you more torque for climbing hills. So maybe a smaller sprocket might help. There's also one with a 12. You can go a little faster. I think this is a number 35 chain. So any kind of clutch that fits a 5 8 shaft with a 3 16 by 3 16 by half inch key and uh, has an 11, 12, or 10 tooth sprocket should work on this. And I did find several. But, you know, I could buy a clutch and then it could be the same thing. You know, I don't know. So I'm going to try dinkering with the, uh, the throttle speed, see if that helps at all. Uh, take a look at it. It seems to run and it revs and, and all that. But, uh, yeah, before I turn off this camera, uh, let me uh, let me go ahead and, and show you how to start it. I don't really want to run it very long in here because I don't have any windows open at the moment. I want to kill myself. But there's a little fuel shutoff down here. So the fuel shutoff has to be flipped forward. I guess it's been, I guess I left it on, huh? Yeah, yeah. Forward lets the fuel into the carb, okay? And then you pull this over to the start position. It's just a little lever right here. It's for the choke. And then you push this button in. And then you pull it, and God willing, the thing will just start right up. Let's see. And then it warms up a little while. how it jumps forward, but the fact is, is that I could, I could hold this thing back, I mean, that's like maximum throttle, I'm getting nothing, max throttle. It's not pulling, not pull, pulling with a dam. So it's nice that it has the, you know, the, the, the cutoff right up there. That's good for safety. It's got a nice throttle. You can see what's happening in it. So you know if it's screwed up, I guess. And uh, starts easy enough. It's got nice layout, nice control, little overhead valve engine on it. You know, it's. I'm not saying that the the, the idea is bad. It's simple, rugged supposedly, except for the handlebar clamp, right? And I'm sure the seat will fall apart instantly. They always do. I'm not too worried about that. But if it would go up a damn hill, we'd have a winner here. 
So that's my mission tonight, is to try and get this thing to go up a damn hill. So. And uh, I may not be able to record the rest of that, because I think I just broke this camera, guys. So, Alright then, thanks for watching. And uh, what can I do? I try and make it work, that's about it. So that's the Motobox MBX-10. Yeah, I've seen them anywhere from 450 to 300 bucks. You can get one at Sears, I think, for 306. And uh, honestly, I kind of wish I'd bought one from a brick and mortar, just so I could take it back to a brick and mortar and say, "Here." But it says, "Do not return to store." That's what it says on all the crap. Do not return to store. Stop. Help with starting problems. You got starting problems. Everybody's got started problems with the MBX-10. Let's tell you how to do it. Derp -a -derp -a -derp. So, I don't know, man. It is what it is.